Good evening, guys. Tony here, Friday night, October the 1st, already, October the 1st. Guys, uh, before I get started tonight, I want to blow the show far, so if you have earbuds in, take them out or lower your volume so I don't blow your eardrums out. And um, here we go. Guys, I'm so excited to make this video tonight. I've been thinking about it all day. Um, we had a, um, a video that um, came forth today. Um, actually, I saw it from Revelation12.com. Uh, he posted this video today. And, uh, and it's uh, basically just a confirmation on the, um, the fig tree generation. Uh, before we get started, guys, uh, blow the shofar, and I want to read you Ezekiel 33.3. If you guys are familiar with my channel, if, um, if you're new subscribers, then one of the things that I see a lot is the number 333, and I made many videos about it, and um, some really weird stuff wrapped around it. Good weird stuff, but there's a lot of kind of strange stuff connected to 333 and 323, but mainly 333. And so um, it's, this is connected to um, Ezekiel 33.3 which says, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. So um, this is just symbolic of a warning, guys. I'm just, I'm blow the trumpet just to, um, just to get your attention, especially when there's some exciting new news that I want to give you. And um, I think tonight qualifies, so um, hence the trumpet. So the shofar. So um, anyways, um, so while I was in the bedroom getting ready to um, to come and make the video, um, I was thinking how excited I was about this uh, new confirmation on the generation thing. And um, I looked over at the clock, and of course it was 726, Harpazzo. So uh, that was very reassuring. Um, so um, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, before I get started, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and accepted the free gift of life that he offers through the gospel, which means good news, then it's time to do it, guys. We are getting close to Jesus' return. Um, there are more and more things um, pointing to it, and I've got I've got quite a few tonight. Uh, just the just the new just kind of the new stuff, but this doesn't even you know um, it doesn't include any of the stuff that we've talked about all last year and all of th this year. So um, so guys, it's it's really time to get saved if you haven't been saved or born again. Believe the gospel of Jesus Christ that Jesus was the Son of God. He came down, he was the word of God made flesh, came to earth and dwelt among us. He lived the perfect life that we could never live. And he died on the cross for our sins, to pay our sin debt in full with his precious blood. He was buried and raised on the third day. He ascended to heaven and made atonement for our sins, uh, past, present, and future for every man, woman, and child that ever has ever lived and ever will live. And all they have to do to receive that is to accept it and believe it. Believe in your heart that God raised him from Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved, sealed, heaven bound and rapture ready as uh, Tim Henderson says. Anyways, guys, um, the generation thing. Um, what it was was um, Naptali Bennett talking about how every sovereign state of Israel that has ever existed has never exceeded 80 years, which kind of blew my mind. I didn't realize that. I just, um, I never thought about it. I never looked into it. But, um, I mean, he's talking from Solomon's temple and, and every every time that there's ever been a sovereign state of Israel, it hasn't exceeded 80 years. And then the one, one time it was only 73 years, which is odd because they turned 73 this year. And he mentioned that it's, it's 70, we're 73 years old and we're not going to let this happen again. But, guys, this is so telling. Um, we've all been wondering, is the Psalms 90:10, the right generation. Are, are we looking at this the right way? Is is could this be of? Could there be a variation of that, or it could be 120 or 50 years? Or how do we know for sure it's Psalms 90 verse 10? Well, I think that we may have gotten our confirmation today, which is why I'm so excited, um, because Israel has never exceeded 80 years as a sovereign state, and this is probably for a specific reason, for a clue of the end times. God made it this way. He designed it this way so that one day we would see it and believe and understand. 
Guys, we are there. We are really close to Jesus' return. Now, you know, there's uh, all kinds of theories about the uh, dreaded overtime, which I believe we're possibly already in, which could go on all the way out to uh, May the 14th, 2022, because they became a nation May 14th, um, 1948. So if you add 70 years to that, you'll end up at 2028, May the 14th. But you got to subtract the seven years for the tribulation. That puts us to this year. May 14th. But since it didn't happen May 14th, we've gone into what the, uh, the the people are calling the dreaded overtime, which means that you're 80 years until you become 81 years. Or in this case, we're set, they're set, Israel's 73 years old this year. So they're going to be 73 years old until May 14th, 2022, and then they'll be 81. I mean, I'm sorry, 74. So, um, and of course, you know, all these things have to happen by the 80, the 80 year maximum, which puts us all the way out to 2028. But what's interesting, though, is if we go past this fall, here's what happened. Most scholars believe that Jesus is going to come back at the end of the tribulation on the Feast of Trumpets with us, with his, um, with his saints, to set up his kingdom. And that would be the fulfillment of the Day of Atonement. So what comes before that would be the Feast of Trumpets. And it's also believed that the rapture will be the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets. So if Jesus comes back on a Feast of Atonement in 2028, um, then if we go past May, um, the fall of this year, um, it's going to put us into another, another year. Anyways, um, Basically, we're in basically like a sweet spot. I think a brother, um, Brother Chooch calls it the uh, hard pot zone. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're in a hot spot, in a, in a sweet spot, a rapture zone. You know, this that makes sense that if we go this year, um, this fall, that that will line everything up to so where Jesus comes back on the Day of Atonement in 2028 and everything's perfect. We won't exceed the 80 years. But if we go past the, the fall this year, going into next spring or into the next fall then we've gone past that time frame so um with that being said guys we are definitely looking at a possibility of a fall rapture don't know for sure and you know it may not happen and you know we may we may not have interpreted the fig tree generation i mean we know the fig tree generation is right um even brother chad was talking about that today we know that part is right the fig tree generation parable we know that's going to happen that israel um, that the generation will not pass till all the things be fulfilled and up to the coming of Jesus' return um, after the tribulation. But we may, our understanding of what a generation is could be off. But I think today he gave us a really huge piece of this puzzle is that Israel has never made it past 80 years as a sovereign state. So that kind of puts everything into perspective again. So now with that, we can refocus. But, you know, with only that, you know, we also have La Palma, um, Brother Chooch and Tyler with Generation 2434 were speaking about this yesterday. And this is interesting, guys. Um, I believe it was yesterday. It could have been this morning. My time's just running all together. I've just been so busy. Um, but anyways, they were talking about um, <clears throat> the word La Palma. Well, not the word La Palma, but the, the capital of La Palma is, um, is, is, is the, uh, hold on. Hang on a second. My brain went black. Yeah, the capital of La Palma is Santa Cruz de La Palma, um, which means a uh, holy cross of the palm, which is super interesting, guys, super interesting. And also there's the, um, there's the, um, the summit of the mountain La Palma, and I can't remember the name of that one, but it means the old, the old summit, the mount, uh, the mountain itself is called something that means the old summit. Um, and then there's, um, of course, La Palma itself. It started, um, it actually started erupting. The volcano started erupting on 9-11. But then the volcano itself erupted this past Sunday. And um, a lot of people were calling it Palm Sunday. So that's really interesting too. Um, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I'm getting my dates mixed up. It's not, it wasn't last Sunday. It was the 19th. Sunday the 19th was when the first uh, volcano erupted. It was on a Sunday, and um, a lot of people were saying, like, Palm Sunday. And, you know, we know that Jesus came into Jerusalem 
ride on a donkey on Palm Sunday. They were actually, they were shaking palm branches and laying the palm branches down on the ground. Anyways, I said all that to say this, that La Palma Island has been the big threat. Everybody's been worried to death about the tsunami and all. And there is the possibility, it's a real possibility, no matter how slim, that this thing could, uh, um, and I'm not even saying it's slim. I guess there's just, there's a chance it could. It's probably just as good as it could than it, than it did not. But a lot of the geologists are saying it's not likely. They're saying it's like one in a million chance. So, I mean, the geologists aren't really, they may not be saying for whatever reason, but at any rate, I see this thing as being like a harbinger, okay? Like a telltale sign of where we are. It's, it could be God's way of saying, pay attention. You know, pay attention to this. Because this could be um, the imminent sign of Jesus' return for his church. Because he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, on the cult of a donkey, in fact, on a day where they were um, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And um, this is just very interesting to me. And so I think that there's a really, a real possibility that we could be going home this fall. And to narrow it down further, um, the shofars that I heard September the, 9th, uh, September the 7th last year and um, November the 7th last year, which is the ninth month and the 11th month, which is 9-11, which is when the earthquake started in La Palma. You see how that connects together. And then I had that dream on the Sunday. I'm not, I mean, I had a dream about going to a, um, a, a store that had merchandise and food and everything was dressed in a the fall theme. And um, I was looking for, uh, looking for potatoes and cookware. And then the morning bef uh, the morning of the eruption on the 19th, I was um, getting ready to go to Walmart to get groceries. And me and my daughter realized that we had to get some more potatoes. And so right when I'm leaving the house, my mind's still on the potato things. I said, we can't fit get the potatoes. I can't make potato soup, of all things. And... Um, so I'm telling her, write it down on the list. And while I'm doing that, I get the notification that the eruption has taken place in La Palma, the eruption. So tying my dream into that, you know, also in my dream was the theme of the, of the balloon going up and my grandson screaming, the baby's gone, the baby's gone. There's a birthing, there's a birthing, the baby has gone up, the baby's being birthed or the baby has gone up, they're like the rapture. You know, so there's all these tie-ins to that dream. I feel like that dream has been fulfilled partially. I mean, I think the other part of the fulfillment would be when we go up. And I think that that's the same thing that happens with a lot of the dreams that I've had that have been prophetic, that there's like two parts, the one part that gets fulfilled, and then the next part that's going to happen at the rapture or shortly after. So, um, and I believe there's still, all of them are open-ended, but they've been, they're being fulfilled as, I believe this, it's all, you know, by design, God God gave me those dreams so I would see it this year, so I would know that this is the year. Also, my brother dying on my birthday on the 21st, and that's another story. But So um, all that's tie-ins, guys. And So um, I believe October is the month because has the November and the October, I'm sorry, the September and the November were like bookends pointing to, November, uh, to October. You know, both of them were on sevens, which, which says that, that when I heard the shofars, God was showing me this or let me allow me to hear this on the seventh days. And I believe that was by design as well, because that's God's number. So that way he was putting his signature on it so that I would know it was from him. Um, and then he also revealed to me a lot of things about the shofars that they were done according to Jewish custom. So it wasn't some random person playing some horn. It was done uh, according to Jewish custom that that makes it more significant. And the fact that none of the dogs were barking when um, this thing was blowing um, is as if no one heard it but me. And it just happened that happened right when I go outside both times on, on these two different, totally different nights. And it never happened again in between or anything. So I believe that they were pointing to October the 7th. And I believe the reason why I heard one on um in September and in, in November is because it's, it's, it's the ninth month and the 11th month. So God is tying in the 9-11 possibly to the La Palma incident, which the earthquake started. It's shaking. Shaking the earth is a way that God's going to wake the earth up, get everybody's attention. He's shaking the earth. And then on the 19th, on Palm Sunday, he ties my dream in to the um, the Sunday that the, that the volcano started, you know. And, the you know, so anyways, all these things are happening. So, um... And then everybody, you know, like Barry All, and everybody's talking about the, the calendars being a month off in Israel so that we're actually in the month of Tishri and that, um, well, we're not in the month of Tishri yet, but we're, we're about to go into the month of Tishri in October instead of September so that on October 7th will be the first day of Tishri, which is Rosh Hashanah, ahead of the year. So all these things, guys, and, then, you know, I've made the videos about believing that um, 
that the very last trumpet of the Feast of Trumpets is when we go up. At the very last, that way we're not actually going on the Feast of Trumpets technically, but the moment it ends, which puts it on a standalone day, which is something that God revealed to me that was a standalone day. So there's all, the, all these tie-ins. So, um, so, um, um, so I just, I just, you know, we're already looking at October 7th and now, and, and see, I've been saying all along that it's possible that the, the shofars that I heard could have been pointing to October. I've been saying that all along. Someone mentioned that in a comment way back when, and I'm, that's been in my mind all along that maybe they were bookends pointing, you know, it's, that's not uncommon to, for God to do things that way. Because first of all, you got the menorah candle where it's lit from left to right, then right to left. And then the center ones wrote, I mean, lit last, you know, the, there's seven total candles. There's three on the left, three on the right, and then the one in the middle. And they also represent uh, God's appointed times, you know, the sea, uh, the appoint, um, the feast days. Uh, so they light them from left to right and then right to left, which I've also talked about. Could someone talk, you know, mentioned to me that that could be that that's how the, the, the feasts are going to be fulfilled. I don't know, but I still do believe, though, that the Feast of Trumpets is the fulfillment. Um, the rapture will be the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets. So I, I believe that I've actually um, I've believed that for a long time. You know, of course, when it didn't happen last year on the Feast of Trumpets, we want, everybody wanted it to happen so bad. I mean, now they start just start looking at everything else. But here we are again now back at Feast of Trumpets. So I believe that those shofars was the one year warning. Um, I believe we're at the four year, the um, fourth year since the Revelation 12 sign, which totally lines up with the, um, you know, the parable that Jesus gave of the Lord of the vineyard came to get fruit off of a certain fig tree for three years and he got no fruit. So he asked the dresser of the vineyard. He says, he says, I've been here three years and got no fruit off this tree. He says, why not cut it down? It's just come. It's just taking up space. Basically, it's come, 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 burn it. I can't speak. It's taking up space. <laughs> so cut it down, you know, because, you know, whatever. And, and then the, the dresser of the vineyard says, Lord, give it one more year. Let me dung it. You know, let me fertilize it and dig around it. And uh, and uh, next year, if you come back and there's fruit on it, then well. And if not, then cut it down then. So it's like 2020 is when all the plagues and stuff started. That was like that one year, giving it that one more year to try to get Israel to produce fruit or the world to produce fruit or however you want to look at it. Because, you know, Israel never accepted Messiah. So this could be the last chance for people to come to Christ and get it right. And instead of that happening, all these other things started happening. You started having all this, um, you know, political scandal and all these things. that was just, you know, rioting in the streets. And then, of course, a whole long God is trying to shake the world with earthquakes and locusts and meteors and uh, murder hornets and you know birds flying uh, dying and falling out of the sky and red seas and you name it it happened last year so i believe that could have been that last that that last year that last year before judgment comes and i believe that that's where we're at now we find ourselves at the fourth year of the revelation 12 sign so i believe that all that ties in and there's many many more guys um and i just think it's just a time that we should all be really excited and really just trying to witness with all our might right now we've got we got, we, it, I mean, literally, we have possibly six days until the 7th of October, 7th and 8th. And we don't know exactly going to be exactly on the 7th or 8th, but sometime during the Feast of Trumpets or at the end, you know, which could start on the 7th. It could start on the 8th. I mean, they you know, have to witness the, the sliver and all that. But still, we're right there at it. So we've got a week, about a week um, before we're going to know. I mean, it may not happen. I mean, we may go on to the next watch. But right now, this seems to be the most important and highest watch ever because so many tie-ins. And I'm, I've had a lot of personal tie-ins. As a matter of fact, on the way to work on Wednesday morning, and I was wanting to get a picture, but because the way the light was, there was no way I would have been able to, you wouldn't be able to see it on the camera. But I was behind a pickup truck that it was a Stanley truck, you know, like the Stanley that makes the tools, I guess, company. They must have also have a um, contractor, you know, contractors that go out for the company and do work i guess i'm assuming i don't know but it had stanley on the truck and on the other side it had a number it had 1888 the word door and then 444 and i mean my my jaw dropped in the truck i'm like i can't i mean in the car my jaw dropped to the floor because i couldn't believe that i was seeing that you know what i mean because first of all you got 1888 and i know that that's just a free toll free number you know that's the new toll free number it used to be, uh, I don't know, one, uh, it's been so long now. Uh, what did it used to be? It used to be something. It was something else years ago. But anyways, um, so you got that. So you got 1888, 
which is the toll-free number. And um, Jesus is, the salvation uh, through Jesus Christ is free. It's toll-free. It's absolutely free. We don't have to do anything to get it. We just have to believe in Christ. So 888 in Gamatria means Jesus. Jesus is 888 in Gamatria, which is kind of weird, that, you know, but that's just, that's just uh, we've always kind of known that. But then you got door, D-O-O-R, door, and then 444. And we know that four is the fourth letter, the, the, um, the Hebrew letter, the fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Dalit, which means door. And, of course, people see in the number 444 a lot. I mean, there's channels that's named after 444. So a lot of people see that number. So you got 188-DOOR-444. I mean, what are the odds, you know? And, and it's, you know, always in the morning I'm listening to videos about the rapture on the way to work. You know, I hook them up to the Bluetooth device I got hooked into the auxiliary. And I don't watch it, but I can just put, I hide the phone, but I, I can listen. You know, so I'm, I'm usually listening to J.D. Farag or uh, Brother Chooch or Brother Tyler or whoever's got, you know, something... You know, they posted it late at night and I can't watch it. I'll watch it in the morning. So anyways, guys, um, that's about all I got. I just, I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. I'm going to be uh, probably posting some more videos this weekend. I got a song I've been working on. I meant to try to get it out last weekend, but I've just been too busy this week to even work on it. So I'm going to try to get that done, make some more videos. But guys, just stay encouraged. Keep witnessing. Keep telling people about Jesus. Uh, time is short. Um Accept the gospel. There's steps in the description. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on the cross, was buried, and raised on the third day. He ascended to heaven uh, to make atonement for our sins. He paid the price for our sins. He nailed it to the cross. He became sin for us and paid our sin debt in full. In every man's sins, guys, we're all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That that no one, no one is righteous, no, not one. So we've all we're all sinners. But Jesus paid that sin debt. The wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So he, the, the wages of sin are death. I mean, that, that is the punishment for sin. But Jesus paid that debt with his own life so that we could obtain eternal life through him. And when we believe this and we confess it with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe it in our heart. Because this is a heart thing. You have to believe it in your heart. I mean, just saying the words isn't, isn't enough. You've got to really believe it and have, put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And you will receive salvation. You will receive eternal life. The gift that Jesus is giving us, the salvation that he's giving us, is eternal life. And um, it's it's forever. It's uh, you, it's it's non-refundable, thank goodness. <laughs> so anyways, guys, I love y'all all so much, and I'll see you on the next video. Be encouraged. Um, hallelujah, Maranatha. Uh, if I don't, I'll either see you here or there, or especially in the air. Brother Chooch, bye.